So I'm Darnell Moore and I am the Associate Director of the Newark Schools Research Collaborative, which is a project between um, the Newark Public Schools and Rutgers University. Today, I guess what I want to say a little bit about is um, violence and its connection to youth. I should start off by saying I grew up in a city that was touted as one of the worst in the nation um, in terms of economics and its uh, rates of violent incidences, and that's Camden, New Jersey. So I guess before I can talk about my experience as an adult professional, I can talk about what it meant for me to grow up as a black male um, in Camden. And I guess my experience then tells me a couple things are pressures that, that really results in youth being uh, turned on to violence. Uh, lack of access to activities um, in communities. Um, and also the pressure to live up to images, particularly for black males, um, that are presented to us through the media and through our families. So in terms of the latter, um, I think for youth, um, particularly youth of color, we are presenting as adults and through the media outlets that we provide, through what they see on TV, through the music. We present them with these um, caricatures or these models um, that aren't healthy for them. So you have black males who feel that they need to perform a thug behavior. Um, they need to perform behaviors that um, lets other folk know that they're not um, weak or that they're not punks and that they're strong. And what happens is youth find themselves in a situation where they have to perform those as if it's like a script that they're living by. I don't blame youth so much for that. I think it starts in the home. So the moment that, um, for instance, you have uh, a young man or something who's crying in the home and you have a mother or father who says something like, wipe the tears off your face um, and be a man, be strong, is a moment that we as adults institutionalize in youth's mind this idea, particularly males, that they need to be strong. And An example, I remember being um, part of a violent fight on my street and uh, I remember running up the stairs and someone had pulled out a gun and I was scared to death like you have a gun in your face you're scared and my stepfather's there and my instant reaction is to freak out and tears came out of my face and I remember him saying and I'm, I'm sure he didn't even mean anything by this stop crying be a man and be strong and I kept thinking you know in my mind that he was about to kill me that was a, a, a father figure who said that to me, but we also hear that through, uh, through the movies we watch, through our friends in the street, through the teachers in our schools, through, through, through various outlets. So if you're a youth out there and you hear, you're hearing all of these different um, messages um, that, that are sort of attempting to, to conform, like help you to conform to these images, I think the first thing that we have to tell you is that you, don't, you can be yourself. You know, it's okay for a male to cry. It's okay to, to not, um, you know, fight back in a class out of fear that somebody else is going to think that you're a punk. It's actually a stronger and more brave thing to not return evil for evil. So our job is also, I think, and I'm, and I'm talking to adults here now, is to think about how we, even while we're telling youth not to be violent, we ourselves are, you know, we help, we, we sort of produce these behaviors in our youth by the things that we tell them and then we live in a country that's violent so while we're on the streets telling folk not to fight you know we're also a country that, that's at war. The problem is it's, it's about all of us and all of us are implicated in it. As adults we need to monitor what we're teaching our kids from the time they, they come you know they show up in our homes. What words are we giving them? What, what sort of how are we teaching them to behave and orient themselves in the world? As youth my, my, my lesson our thought would be to be yourself and not to feel the need to buy into the pressures of having to be something that you're probably not. Um, be a human being. You don't have to be a strong. You don't have to be a strong man or a girl, a, a, a young woman of color on the street, and think that you need to be a beast or somebody that's able to fight and fend for yourself. Be the loving person that you're created to be. And we also, as adults, need to think about ways that we can create programs that are youth-friendly. And in order to do that, we need to bring youth into conversation. This type of activity that's being sponsored by community and schools is the type of thing that we need because it's involving youth in the conversation. Hopefully this is a good start for something that's going to be very big and positive for others. Thanks.